Hey guys, so today I'm going to answer a subscriber question and the question in question was Frederick, what do you think is missing in vanilla JavaScript in order for it to become a viable option to using as part of professional projects? So let's get into it. Now that's a big question. And basically it boils down to figuring out, okay, what is... Well, what are the requirements? What is actually missing from vanilla, like the standards, in order for us to be able to just throw away all these frameworks and simply use the standard to produce the same level of application development, or the same, be, at least have the same level of product, productivity and ease of development as we have with, say, React or so forth. Now, from my perspective, like uh, the person who asked this question was kind of focusing on web components as being like the way to do this. And to a point I can agree uh, with that. Although I am one of those people who will state that it is actually feasible and it's not only feasible, it's actually possible. I actually made a video series about this. It is more than possible to create a vanilla JavaScript application. I mean, it, we have been doing it for just regular websites for years. Just If you have a, like a, where the majority of your site is based on static pages, just using JavaScript as is today in like in any fashion will absolutely work. But the focus of this question is, no, is more leaning towards SBAs or single page applications where the it's actually very hard. It's very tricky to do this in a sustainable manner unless you know what you're doing. And I mean, although I know how to do this and I, there's plenty of people who can build an SBA application with just vanilla JavaScript, uh, we also have to consider, and that's the thing that makes it not the greatest idea, and that is that it, it's for a sustainable solution to work over time, it's vital that it has some type of very well-established, well-thought-out standard, because if you have multiple people working on the same thing, it's vital that they have some type of frame. I, not the, they don't have to have a framework. It doesn't have to be somebody else's framework, but you have to have a foundation, a established work order, a way of working that everybody can abide by. Because if you don't, you will start to very quickly get a lot of code rot and a lot of deviations in approaches to doing things. And that's not what you want. It's similar to building a car. Everybody has to have a very clear picture of how that car is going to look and how they should build it as a team. If everybody has their own idea of how to build a car, you're going to get you're going to just get a complete mess. Same thing here. So frameworks such as React and Angular and so forth in view, they help you with this. That's the whole point of these frameworks. They give you that structure and also on top of that of course they solve certain problems that make it unfeasible to do it in just vanilla JavaScript. And those are the problems that I think we should focus on because those are the things that are lacking in the standard, which are, well, from the first thing that comes to mind is routing. So what do I mean by routing? Well, client-side routing, being able to express that you want to show different states. Because when a user maneuvers, I mean, if you've used React or Angular or so forth, you know that they can actually, like, you can click different links and routes and so forth, and you can mount various components to the page. That's something that is not that easy to do on the client side. You can do it, and, I, you know, if you know your stuff about you know, browser standards and so forth, you, you can absolutely build this yourself. But it's not something that is easily accessible within the browser. And that's the thing that is key here, because just because it is possible to do it, it comes down to that, all right, how easy is it versus how easy is it to you, or like the value of, or no, rather the cost of using a third party library versus how hard it is to actually build it yourself. And that ratio is off here because it requires a fair amount of experience and some in-depth knowledge about browser standards and you know just being fairly experienced with working within JavaScript in order to build it yourself. It's not something that, you know, there's no API in the browser that just let, gives you this for free. So that's number one. You need to have something like that because otherwise it's very, it's pretty much impossible for you to in an efficient manner express that if the user clicks here and open, clicks these buttons here, the this state, this route that, I, that user builds up, that's the state that they want to be on. So that's number one. Number two is efficient state management. Now, this is not a big problem today because, I mean, 
even with, I mean, there are de libraries that do this very well. My personal favorite is Redux for this. And my, it's re the reason for it being my favorite is not so necessarily because it's something elaborate. It's rather the opposite. That's because it's so simple that you can build it yourself. Building Redux or building a, a basically a pub subsystem or a, a communication pipeline like that is fairly st straightforward. And that can then be connected into the various components on your page. So managing, managing that state is fairly straightforward. But it's not something that is all that accessible to... I mean, it's not in the standards. You still have to build it yourself. It's a small thing in comparison to the bigger things. But it's still something that should, I think, should be part of our everyday workflow. Apart from that, I think the biggest one, apart... Well, that's relative. This is probably one of the harder ones, which is the re-rendering. That's the last part of this. And what I mean by the re-rendering, that kind of ties into the state thing again, because it's something that hasn't been... Well, I, I honestly... Per, I Personally, I believe that React has done it the best. And basically, the thing that is very, very hard to do in vanilla JavaScript is to change the page or rather update your different nodes in the DOM tree when your data changes. So when you dispatch a message or you update a value somewhere on the page, it is very tricky for you to communicate to the different components on your page that, hey, you need to re-render yourself now and update yourself so that you have the freshest data. So that the thing that's actually being shown to the user. That re-rendering is something that React does, and you may have heard about the diffing algorithm and all that good stuff. That's exactly what that is about. That's why the page, like that's what React does. It re-renders itself on whenever you, some, well, depending on the events, of course, when there is an action being uh, dispatched on the page or some event is taking place, right? That is also not something that is very straightforward to do in the browser. You can build it, once again, you can build it yourself. It's not impossible, but it's not very easy to do so. And I would say that these are the, I'm probably forgetting something, but these are the three main ones. You need a, an efficient way to do client-side routing. You need an efficient way to do state management, and you need a efficient way to do component re-rendering because we are already, you know I mean, web components are already kind of here. So we already have this component way of working and it doesn't have to work that exact way. Actually, it's possible to do it without web components. So I don't think that that's right now much of an issue. So that's my answer. My personal thoughts about this is that route, client-side routing, proper state management and message dispatching, and finally having the ability to do efficient re-rendering or up, at least updating of nodes in the DOM tree when a event takes place is like these are the three main things that are needed in order for us to have a very very feasible and probably like on par solution to doing well as making SBA applications in just vanilla JavaScript have a great day